CNN senior legal affairs correspondent Paula Reed and CNN chief White House correspondent Phil Mattingly. What a, what a huge 780. day. Every time I hear it, it doesn't. But I'm not even talking about I that. I know, the $130,000. That's, I mean, that's our numbers yeah. of the day, 11780 Fourth year where those have been numbers of the day at some <laughs> point. It's wild. <laughs> I can't, first, let's, we'll get to Stormy Daniels, right, and to come out on this. Well, I mean, there could be additional evidence that the jurors heard, but the Atlanta Journal-Constitution did a great job of getting these interviews and revealing some of this additional evidence. It's so unheard of to get this kind of insight into what's going on with a grand jury, to hear what they were thinking, the evidence that they heard. Happening in New York right now, because the fa this is a very... We've had Alvin Bragg on the show, the DA. Part of the reason, perhaps, why Cy Vance walked away from it, you have to really thread a needle here and jump a lot of hurdles to prove Donald Trump's involvement in every step of this. How significant is it that, that Michael Cohen talked to the grand jury again yesterday on the same day that Stormy Daniels, Phil, was with prosecutors in his office? The beauty of my role on this panel is I'm not a lawyer, <laughs> and Paula is. I'm recovering, what, but I can well, step in. Yeah, we'll you. work together. I will say, though, from afar, and Paula's been doing great reporting on all this, I know this is super well, Right? Like, there were very real reasons why it seemed like Alvin Bragg was not going to, or why Cy Vance yeah. didn't end up moving forward, why Alvin Bra Bragg didn't seem like he was going to right. move forward. Um, and very real reasons why, when you talk to people in the Trump orbit, they feel like this is not their biggest concern. But can, can you explain, though, Alvin Bragg thinks he has a shot at this now. What does he need Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels to prove? They he are the crux of it. It's a bad day for Donald but the Trump. The payment's when... not illegal. It's the exactly. other it's stuff. Not about the, it's not about the hush money. It's not about the alleged affair. It's about how this hush money was reimbursed. And yesterday, you know, you have a, an adult film star with whom you had an alleged affair and who people have testified that you paid hush money to to keep quiet about the alleged affair ahead of the campaign in 2016. Talking to prosecutors on the same day that your former fixer shows up to talk to the grand jury. This is bad. But again, the key witness to talk about the hush money, but he's really at the center of this case. How was this reimbursed? Was it also done to help the campaign? Because then it can be charged differently. But then the sudden uptick in activity. What is it, like eight or nine witnesses, including Hope Hicks? Uh, yep. um, uh, listen, his, his defense on television is Joe Tacopino. We, we know him as the politics, right? He's talking about the politics of it and whether it's going to affect 2024. Can we play this and then a quick reaction from you guys? Correspondent? Yeah. What do you think? Um, it's probably a decent assessment of the political dynamics, um, not to give anybody too much credit at this stage. Look, it is very early on in a primary process. We have no idea what's going to happen next, and the people that you think are definitely going to be top-tier candidates may flame out before Iowa even happens in terms of the caucuses. The reality is, though, when it comes to the very, very sticky supporters in the Republican primary of President Trump, this certainly isn't going to make them walk away. The bigger question is, does it make the... If, if President Trump could, former President Trump can get 30% or 35% in the primary, does something like this drive the 5 to 6% he would need to really get things over the top away? I, I don't... I mean, if you're a Republican and you know Alvin Bragg and you know what Alvin Bragg kind of made his public posture in the lead-up to taking over the role as DA, I don't think that this is something that dissuades you. I, I just... Nobody that I've talked to whether they like the former president or don't on the Republican side of things, thinks this is the thing that changes minds. If anything, it just brings it back to the forefront that Democrats don't like him or, or something like that. It's easy to message, as you saw last night yeah, on the air and, show. And why now, right? Because right. there could be additional evidence that they've uncovered a new witness. We haven't seen that. And there are a lot of questions about whether he is bowing to political pressure. And that's not what we want to see in our justice system, prosecuting people for political gain. With all the investigations happening, we could do this until... <laughs> Uh, what is it, CNN tonight, to, you know, at 11 o'clock. We could have we could, Let's not, without commercial breaks. We could be I having this conversation. I love you guys, but I need a nap. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Phil. Thank you, Paula.